I probably should have mentioned it at the top for those of you who play Spot the Future Star, but even without my help, many of you probably spotted young Tony Curtis doing a rumba with Yvonne DiCarlo. He's billed simply as Gigolo. As Burt Lancaster stares longingly at DiCarlo, it's amusing to realize that he and Gigolo will soon share top billing in one of the great films of the 50s, Sweet Smell of Success. That rumba number, performed by Isai Morales and his orchestra, is one of the sexiest musical scenes in noir. These were a specialty of director Robert C. Admack, who also included astounding musical sequences in his films Phantom Lady and Christmas Holiday. Sadly, this was the last screen appearance of the Puerto Rico-born Morales, who died the following year at only 33 years of age. One of the things that makes Crisscross Cross come alive is a supporting cast whose faces, if not names, are certainly familiar to movie fans. While the normal characters are sketched by straight arrows, such as Stephen McNally and Richard Long, Siadmak peppers his underworld with deliciously bent oddballs. There's Frank, the bartender, played by Noir's favorite homunculus, Percy Helton. Well, if you're not looking for anybody, and if you're not a checker like you say you're not, what are you trying to strike up a conversation for? There's Slim's shady mater d, Tom Petty. That's P-E-D-I, not to confuse him with a certain rock star. That's the ticket. That's the ticket. Cheers. Anchored on a bar stool is Joan Miller, funny and poignant as the Roundup's regular lush. Bad day at the races. Finchley, the robbery's booze-fueled mastermind, is played by Alan Napier, who finds steady work years later as Bruce Wayne's butler Alfred on the Batman TV series. And then there's the mysterious hospital visitor, Mr. Nelson. Robert Osterloh doesn't do much in this scene, but Siadmak turns his appearance into one of the creepiest and most suspenseful scenes in any crime film. Osterloh was a fixture in the genre, with bits in films such as White Heat, Gun Crazy, 7-Eleven Ocean Drive, The Prowler, and many more. It's not just the actors that come across so vividly. Criss Cross features some of the most evocative images ever of Los Angeles's Bunker Hill, which Siadmak exploits for maximum effect, including that stunning interior shot of Yvonne DiCarlo that features the legendary Angel's Flight Railway as a backdrop. Siadmak and cameraman Franz Planer make exceptional use of Southern California's radiant natural light in the daytime scenes, and the dramatic shifts between sunlight and shadow make this film, in my opinion, the ultimate California noir, at least in black and white. Now, smack in the middle of this sinister demimonde is the character of Anna. Over the years, I've encountered negative reactions to Yvonne DiCarlo's performance all of which essentially boil down to she's not Rita Hayworth and she's not Ava Gardner. Well, before landing this role, DiCarlo was typically cast as an alluring exotic in films like Slave Girl, Casbah, and Song of Scheherazade, which led critics then and now to feel that she was miscast in Criss Cross. But nothing could be further from the truth because DiCarlo is essentially playing herself a kid from a broken home in Canada who came to Hollywood and got knocked around trying to trade her beauty and talent for some kind of security. DiCarlo clearly understood and embodied the character of Anna because this was her life, but without the dismal fate. And she aces one of the best scenes any actress has in film noir. Her tirade towards that stupid sap Steve, well, I call it the femme fatale manifesto. She's speaking for all of Noir's bad girls in that scene. Well, people get hurt. I can't help it. I can't help it if people don't know how to take care of themselves. I'm sorry I can't be like you. I'm not like you. I wasn't born that way. Yes, you're right. I am different. I never wanted the money. I just wanted you. And how about that last scene? The all-in commitment of the actors, Siad Mack's masterful direction, the dreamy art direction, and Miklos Rose's fantastic score all combined to make this one of the most Shakespearean endings in any crime movie. If you like your noir fatalistic and your romance is doomed, this is as good as it gets. And I love that Siadmak borrowed a bit of 
code skirting business from double indemnity not showing the law arriving to clean up the mess only suggesting it with the faraway sound of sirens and the look on Duryea's face as I said in my intro this is a master stylist at the top of his game someone clearly inspired by Siad Mac's vision was Steven Soderbergh in 1995 he remade Criss Cross as the underneath and comparing the two films points up the difference between classic noir and what's come to be called neo-noir. In the latter half of the last century, audiences have become convinced that movies should be naturalistic and authentic. The underneath, for example, is relentlessly realistic as a crime story. It bricklays motivation for its characters to give the story as much credibility as possible. And the actors play it with the studied naturalism that's supposed to make movies believable. The result is an engaging but forgettable two hours. By contrast, Criss Cross is 88 minutes of spellbinding cinema that has virtually nothing to do with any life we might recognize. There's not a moment in it that feels natural or realistic. Instead, it comes at you with the hyper intensity of desire and imagination, bigger and better than life. It's dynamic and visceral imagery and its visceral dynamic acting stick in the mind long after naturalism has evaporated. Modern noir feels like some approximation of reality. Classic noir feels like a fever dream. But of course, you already knew that and appreciate it. That's why you're watching Turner Classic Movies. Share your thoughts about Criss Cross on the Noir Alley Facebook page and Twitter feed and arrange your holiday schedule to be back here next week when I present a film picked especially for the holiday season. An obscure but completely satisfying Christmas offering from an unexpected source. Hammer Studios, England's House of Horror. Andre Morel and Peter Cushing co-star in 1961's Cash on Demand. We went out of our way to land this one, so I expect to see you all here next week. Until then. <laughs>